Hi, my name is Mark, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about annotation DB objects. Now, annotation DB objects are really just a way of making things easier for you, the end user. They're intended to be sort of an abstraction, an object that hides a lot of complexity. They can hide um, complicated relational databases, they can hide simple objects, they can hide uh, web resources, but basically they represent a way to get some data. And they basically present you with four basic methods that I'll be talking about later in a demo. And these methods are constant for all the different objects. That is, all annotation DB objects should implement these four methods that I'll be talking about. So that when you see one of these objects, you should be able to just use one of these methods and get the data out that you want. You can find them inside of packages. You can also find them inside of the annotation hub. Now I'm going to give a demo. So I'm going to load up a little library here, and uh, this is the org hsegdb library, and it contains an annotation db object. And I can see that if I just list the contents. Now this package also lists a whole bunch of other objects, but I'm only going to be looking at this one right here. This object, the org hsegdb object, this object is, um, its show method will tell you a little bit about it, about where the data came from that's in it. It actually is masking a database, but that's not really important. All you really need to know is that it's an annotation DB object. Um, the particular type it is, is an org DB object. And that it contains um, data that can be accessed with these four methods I'm going to talk about. The first method is the columns method. The columns method basically just gives you a little vector that indicates all the different kinds of things you can get out. So in this object you can extract entree gene IDs, there's PFAM IDs, IPI IDs, enzymes, Go IDs, so on and so forth, Unigene. The next method is the key types method. Now it's a lot like the columns method except that frequently the key types method will, re will be a shorter list than the columns method. This is basically the things you can extract that also can be used as keys. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Basically that leads us to method 3. Method 3 is where we actually can have the keys method which allows us to extract keys. Now in this case I'm going to call the keys method and you'll notice the first argument is the annotation DB object just like before but the second argument is the type of key that we're going to extract. This is an ID that we extracted by using the key types method. So here you can see I've just got the first six of the entree gene ID keys that are extractable from this. And of course I can use that for other key types. I can pull out the symbols. And I can even use other arguments with the keys method. So for example, suppose I only wanted those keys as symbols that you know, match the pattern MSX. Well, I can get those just like that. And now the final method is the select method. Now the select method requires several arguments. It requires the annotation DB object. It requires a list of keys that you want to extract data for. It requires columns. These are the things you want to learn more about. And it requires a key type, just like the keys method. So it needs a key type that matches the keys that you're giving it, and it needs to know what you want to know about those keys in the form of the columns argument. So here I'm going to specify the keys like this. I'm going to get the first couple of entree gene IDs. Those are my keys. And then I'm going to basically specify these columns, the go and the symbols. And then I'm going to call select. And there we go. Select returns a data frame that has all of the uh, keys that I specified in the first column, followed by the information I requested, the go information in these next three columns here as well as the symbol information I asked for. The Go information is special because you get three columns back. You get the Go ID, the evidence code for that ID, and the ontology, the specific Go ontology that goes with that Go term. Normally though, you just get one column. And also you'll notice there's a warning message. And this warning message is basically telling me that because of the request I made, I've basically resulted in a one-to-many relationship. In other words, each one of these entree gene IDs matches several different Go IDs. 
and that means that the data frame that comes back isn't two rows long, but in this case is actually more like nine. Whereas if I'd only asked for the symbol, I would have gotten two rows because there's only a one-to-one -one relationship here between symbol and entree gene ID. That's the end of my demo.